Hey guys, it's Dave the Software Dev again, and we're working on our uh, snake video game. Uh, you probably played a game like this before where a snake moves around the screen and he eats little bits of food, and he grows bigger every time he does. So this is the third video in this series, and what we're going to add in this video is event handling and, uh, and movement, so our little snake guy can actually move around. Uh, so I'm going to just dive right in here. Let's go to our index file and we're going to reference a new script and I'm going to call this one snake events. So there you have it. Uh, we're basically uh, just going to put all of our events into this one particular uh, file. So now inside of our snake event I'm going to create our snake object just like we have uh, with all of our other event files before. Uh, sort of like a namespace there. I'm also going to configure some, uh, or create rather, some constants, or we'll treat them like constants, where I set up the key codes to use uh, for our keyboard event handling. So these are our uh, event code constants. Uh, you, can, you can find them, there's a lot of tables on, just search Google for JavaScript keyboard event codes and you can you can find which ones correspond to the particular uh, key that you're interested in. In this case I'm interested in the arrow keys and then some players like to use the WASD so we're going to uh, support that as well with this game. Uh, next I'm going to create a function where I actually register these events. So here I've created a function register events and we're adding an event listener to the actual window that way they don't have to click on the canvas first or anything like that. We're going to handle the key down event, and we're going to use our uh, our snake dot key down function here. So I've only really got uh, just an alert in there to say, "Hey, there was an event," just so we can uh, verify that all this is uh, is working properly. So now we have to actually call that register events function. I'm going to put that in my uh, snake dot init, which lives in snake dot js. After we've created the grid and our first little food item we're just going to call register events. So here's where we left off. We have our tile engine loaded. We have our snake uh, guy starting in the center of the screen. We have a piece of food for him to chase. Uh, I'm going to refresh this and I'm going to press the left arrow key and there you can see my alert uh, that we got an event. Now I'm going to press the W key and there you can see my alert uh, that we got an event. So our event handling is working. We just need to actually make it do something now. So I'm not going to try to get too fancy with uh, the way I handle motion in this game. All I'm going to do is create two variables in my snake.js, uh, a move x and a move y. So if our, if our snake is moving um, to the right, for instance, then we'd want him to move one position to the right, one position to the right, one position to the right as he's moving, of course, and no positions up or down. So in this case, move X would be 1, he would move 1 position over, and move Y would be 0. Uh, if I wanted him to move uh, up, then move Y would be negative 1, because he's moving a minus 1 Y from his current position, and his X would be 0, move X would be 0. So move Y, uh, likewise move X negative 1, Y 0, and move Y of 1, and move X of 0 would go down. So now that we've got those uh, configured there, let's actually populate those uh, with using our, our key down event. So here we're setting the move X and move Y values based upon which key was pressed. Uh, again, if we wanted to move left, then his X would go negative one. Uh, key A would also correspond to left. Uh, arrow right would move him plus one X. Up would move him minus one Y and down would move him one Y. So those are the, the directions that our snake is capable of moving in. So uh, let's write some code to actually make him do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go into my index.html file and this window.gameloop is now called every frame. Uh, that would be a little bit too fast to have our, our guy move. Um, one thing we have done for, for this for this game is it doesn't really rely on frame rate too much even though we've got some optimizations in there you know for a good frame rate that's just something I would do in any game uh, but this one uh, we're actually going to slow that down a little bit and we're only going to call that uh, that game loop uh, every 250 milliseconds 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call a move function inside of my game loop, and that's going to move our snake uh, based upon his move x and move y values that are being controlled by our events. I'm going to put that in snake.js, and it's just going to be a function. So here's our move function, and it's super easy. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is wherever our snake currently is, uh, we're going to tell that tile that it needs to redraw itself on the next frame. And that's because our little snake guy is about to move off of that tile. And uh, if we don't redraw that tile, then it'll look like the snake continues to stay in that tile when he's not really there. So we need to redraw that tile that he's currently on. Uh, second, we're going to move him by adding the move X and move Y to his current position. And then we're going to uh, tell the snake itself that it needs to redraw because we've moved it. So uh, this set position redraw function does not exist yet. Let's go into our snake grid and we're going to add that little helper function here. Um, and really, I'm just going to grab this and copy it, and paste it, and get rid of the type parameter. And we're just going to tell it to redraw there. So let's take a look at, uh, at what this looks like. So here we have what we had uh, prior. I'm going to refresh. And uh, now I'm going to just start moving our little snake around. And as you can see, he actually moves uh, around the screen. So let's go over that food tile, and I'll show you how important it is that you redraw everything. So I'm going to, I just went over that food tile there. It's still there. It hasn't moved because we hadn't written code yet to change that food tile. But it's just not redrawing. So that's why we have to set that uh, that redraw for every tile that the snake lives on. We also don't have any collision detection with the walls yet, as you can see. But that's, uh, that's about it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, please like it and uh, share it. And uh, also subscribe. Uh, in video number three, we're going to, uh, to have our snake actually, uh, actually eat uh, the food and grow a bit larger. And we'll actually really have a, a, a mostly complete game.